Question, how do I know if there is a class explosion in my project? Or is that just my project? Uh, is my, my project is just big. What do you mean by class explosion? I'm thinking you, you're talking about... Um, I think I'm thinking you're talking about um, what's it called, uh, like a monolithic class, a class that's too large. Um, I mean, <laughs> a class explosion. If you're talking about monolithic classes, um, I'm just gonna go on, go down that route. If you're if you're talking about that, uh, you know, you have a monolithic class. Your first smell, your first tell is gonna be that. It's, it's, uh, oh, too many classes. Well, since I started on this tangent, just in case anyone wants to know, you know, you have a monolithic class when you've got a class that's like, I don't know, over 500 lines. There's really no rule of thumb, but, um, your first tell is going to be how many lines of code is in this class. Now there are some classes that just need to be fairly large, uh, for whatever the case may be, but that's your first tell. You open up a class, you're scrolling through it and it's just huge, um, which is an issue uh, logistically, because if you ever had to, you know, refactor or do a code review, or if you're brand new to a project, and you're trying to familiar, familiarize yourself with the code, um, you know, you don't want to have to sift through thousands of line of code, especially if it's all in one place. Because uh, we're humans, and we make patterns out of things. So if you if you break your classes into pieces, um, it's much easier to uh, to sort of digest that and find patterns. Now, another tell of a monolithic class uh, is that it has it's responsible for too much, um, and this this is made pretty obvious if you use namespacing. If you have a class that's referencing a lot of different namespaces, that's a pretty good code smell or indication that this class is doing too much. It's responsible for handling too many disparaging things. Um, and that's honestly one reason why I do recommend using namespaces because it really does uh, help you define your boundaries and keep yourself honest. If you make class and you're like, oh, well, it's got to reference this part and that part and then it needs this namespace and those are all your own namespaces a part of the same project, either you need to rework your boundaries or uh, you're, you know that you're starting to create something that's monolithic and is just responsible for way too many things. Uh, another good tell is to look through the methods and see what they're responsible for. Um, you know, maybe for, as a, for instance, if you had a player class and you see, well, okay, the player manages its health, you might see, you know, an int called health and, and a constant called max health. But then all of a sudden you see, you know, uh, a inventory in that, in that player class. Well, okay. Maybe, maybe the player should be responsible for its own inventory. Sure. And then all of a sudden maybe you see, um, you know, movement and then you see movement animations and you're like, okay, wait, so the player class is responsible for managing health figuring out how, how to do movement, and then also figuring out how to animate movement. Those are a lot of responsibilities to toss into a single class. And so that's where I would say, you know, you know that's d definitely a code smell. But that wasn't your question. Your question wasn't about monolithic classes. Your classes was, uh, your question was about ha having too many classes. And well, you know, I guess it just depends. You know, I mentioned namespacing. Um, so if you so if you had like a big folder, if you had one folder for your entire project and it was just filled with 20 classes, you know, your problem might not be that you have too many classes. Your problem might be that your the structure of your project is not well defined. In which case, I'd recommend trying to figure out what your boundaries are and how you want to break those up, both with namespaces and with folders. Uh, so also a recommendation there is that if you have a namespace, it should live, uh, you should have a folder that corresponds to your namespace. For instance, if your namespace was game dot, if you, let's say your namespace was just game, all right, my game. If you had uh, a feature set that was all about movement, I would put all those movement classes into a, fol a folder called movement and then create an, uh, a namespace called game dot movement. So that would be your first thing to think through. Um, th now, there is a case where you really can have too many classes, um, and that is when you've kind of taken the single responsibility principle, the, the S in solid principles, if you're not aware. Um, that's when you've kind of taken that to the, to the next level. 
And that's where you might say, hey, the player, let's say the player class should manage its own health. But you know what? I'm going to have a class called player health, and then I'm going to have a health class to represent what health is. And, you know, you start really getting granular. Um, I guess, I guess I can't think of any real code smells that pop up like I could for monolithic class uh, um, that indicate that you have too many classes. But I guess it's part of it's like feeling thing. I mean, if you open up a project and, you know, think, put yourself in the shoes of a new developer, um, a new developer coming into your project, are they going to be overwhelmed by the amount of classes you have? Um, and I know that's a little subjective, but, you know, if you do have feature folders, you know, and you do have like a health, a, a health folder that corresponds to a game dot health or, or movement namespace, and that folder, you open it, and even that has 20 or 50 classes, you have to consider that, you know, that that new developer isn't going to really know where to start looking. Um, and that's why using, you know, naming conventions for your classes is, is a good good idea. Um, it, it Look, when you write code, it's all about being predictable, and it's all about being human readable. We don't write code the way we do for the compiler. We write code the way we do so that humans can read it. And, uh, you know, I, I try to put myself in the shoes of a new developer, but I also try to put myself in the shoes of myself in like two weeks, because if I look at some code that I wrote two weeks ago today, I, I'm not going to remember what it was all about. So I'm trying to think ahead. How can I write this code in a way that, that, uh, that I'm going to know what I was doing, uh, you know, back then. And so, you know, that's what you got to consider when you're, you know, when you're breaking up a class into, into, uh, into smaller chunks and smaller classes you're really trying to consider what are your boundaries what kind of boundaries are you setting and uh and how are you breaking up the responsibility Listen.